Hello everyone, it's Mari from Mari's Miscellany. I'm glad you're here. Today's video comes from a question from a viewer, Bob Chatori. I hope that I pronounced that correctly. I wanted to make an honest attempt. If I mispronounce that, I apologize. Please feel free to correct me. He asked if I could show the yarn swift that I use, and I got you. I've actually got three different styles, so I'm gonna show the different styles talk about the pros and cons that I've experienced with these styles and the circumstances under which you might want to choose one versus the other. All right, let's get to it. So entry level, very first yarn holder that I ever got. Yarn holder, um, yarn swift, it's the same thing. Um, so this was the very first one that I got, skein holder off of Amazon. Current prices, the cheapest I found it was $16.99. $20.99 about, uh, about the most expensive that I saw, 2021. And so it is in a clamp-on umbrella style made of metal and plastic. So there is a clamp here with a spring and you press that and press upward, and I'm actually twisted around a bit, there we go, and press upward and it opens up like an umbrella. There we go, okay? And then this part down here is the clamp that you can put onto the table. So I find it best to support the bottom and then get the top in place, there we go. And squeeze those two together a little bit to hold them in place while you turn this dial. And that screws it in place. There you go. And it spins. And it works great, except these metal bars at the end of it there's a little bit of a loop and then it's cut off and there's a what are these called a jumper a jump ring that slides into that little loop that these then connect to the problem is that that metal end there is just cut off blunt and it's sharp and there's a gap leading to that loop. So what happens is if you're pulling the yarn at an angle too much upward or downward, it's going to snag on that and slide into that loop and jerk the whole thing. And it's frustrating, very frustrating. That was my biggest complaint with this thing. Now, I found a workaround where I um, put bits of aluminum foil and wrapped around the the um, bar ends and that helped quite a bit every once in a while it would catch and plink and one of those little aluminum foil ends would go flying but it kind of like you know stopped and it, it fortunately each time it managed to prevent the yarn from actually sliding in there and um, jerking the whole thing around so Another thing that would probably work would be probably um, um, hot glue dots on each of those points would probably work as well. Maybe it's just me. Take that with a grain of salt. It could just be a Mari problem, but that's my experience and that's what I'm here to share. So this one, yes, if you need the cheapest, figure out a way to, to you know, problem solve those, those um, metal ends and you've got a decent tool. This is the next one that I got. No, I forgot. There's one in storage that is the wooden version of this one. And not quite the same problem because there weren't those blunt metal ends to get stuck on, but it was um, twine that was holding the bars together and it would loosen up and it was just, it was more finicky than I cared for. And so I ended up going to this style, which um, basically uses gravity. 
So you're going to take the skein of yarn and put it on there. I forgot to demonstrate this with the um, other style, but it's very similar. With this one, what I would do at this point is I would grasp the clamp and I would pull it upward to spread the arms out. On this one, what you do is you turn this wooden dial that's at the top, turn it clockwise, and it follows along these grooves and pushes this point down the groove and spreads the arms out enough to hold the skein comfortably. Now, as you are using this and turning it round and round, what is gonna happen is this is screwing downward, this following this channel, and the arms will continue to spread. And the reason you need that is because these hanks of yarn, that's what it's called when it's in this continuous loop, is a hank of yarn. So it's really strong when it's this many strands thick. The more that you pull the yarn, the thinner that the hank gets, the fewer strands it has, the less strong it is, and it starts to loosen up. And so the arms are spreading to accommodate that. And so it, it's all taking place by gravity and these channels that it's following. Now, one thing that happens a lot is that um, wooden dial will seize. And you'll be going along, going along, and it'll start to get tighter and tighter and more resistance. And that's because the wooden dial is seizing a little bit. Um, and so you'll just want to turn it just a little quarter turn counterclockwise and that will loosen it and you'll feel this kind of settle in and then you can continue to use it. Not a major deal, but it's a thing. And then again, when we're talking about if you end up pulling at a bit of an angle upward or downward, you run into these corner bits and that can become problematic. You can pull it off, you can pull it down. Um, if the, the tail end gets loose, it will start wrapping around this base and you have to stop and make sure that the yarn is wrapped in there carefully. It's, it's, it's not a problem with the design, it's just the nature of working with yarn in this kind of you know um, setup. But I found that the third Swift took care of all of the problems that I'd been having. Did I mention price? I think I forgot to. On this one, I found them for $50 to $70. So this is the most expensive of the three. I think that honestly, because of the problem of having to tweak that and then having to go very parallel or else you'll snag on the ends. For those reasons, I don't think that this is the best design. And because I don't think it's the best design, um, it's unfortunate that it's the most expensive. I think that it's the prettiest. It's, it's got a nice um, look to it. It's a great aesthetic. And I'm happy to have it in my kit. I do every once in a while, I use this one when I'm working from the hank, when I'm not winding it into a ball or a skein. Um, if I'm literally just, I'm opening this up and I'm working right from it, sometimes I will use this one. So I do still use it. This last one is the lowest tech and the easiest to use and it solved all of my problems. So you saw how quickly I just disassembled that. So this one um, is a few pieces and you slide the base, the feet together. There's just, they're both notched. So you just slide them together and then you add these dowels. The shortest one goes in the center of the base the arms are both notched and those notches slide into each other 
and one side, one of the arms has the measurements for the holes that these dowels will go into. You're gonna slide the center of the arms onto the dowel on the center of the base, and then you're gonna place your dowels wherever you want to. So I start a little bit loose, Go ahead and lower the skein onto it and then I pull out the dowels there you go and that's it it's the lowest tech it is the easiest to use I have less problems with this one and really the problems it's not you know necessarily a, a, a problem of the design or anything like that it's just you know if, if you're not careful and you're coming at too much of an angle it's going to catch more often on these other designs on the umbrella style designs and on this one it doesn't happen as often it happens more if you angle downward because there's not a lot of space to go parallel works perfectly fine but if you're pulling parallel you're more likely to go downward as your arm rests depending on if you're you know pulling from this game um, I use this one the most, and I definitely use it when I'm reskeining. So, um, if I have a hank of yarn like this, and I um, maybe it got kind of you know poorly handled while it was being dyed, and it looks a little wonky, sometimes I reskein them. And um, this is the one that I use for now until I get that kind of equipment. We super simple. This one runs 35 to 39 dollars so ultimately i say get the metal umbrella if you need the most compact and or the cheapest hack those metal ends and you'll have a decent piece of kit this one i like the aesthetic of it it is functional but I don't think that the design is better than or less problematic than this design, and this design is cheaper. So, uh, worst case scenario, you're looking at 22, 40, and 70. And I definitely recommend this one. This is my favorite, use it all the time. I have two of them. And if I had to do it all again, knowing what I know, I would just go straight for this one. So that is my opinion on these yarn switch. Your mileage may vary. If you've had different experiences, by all means, go ahead and share those experiences so that anybody watching this video can see the different kinds of you know, experiences that people have using the equipment. And remember that um, your circumstances are going to change your experience. One thing I found out is this one and humidity, not so much. So those are the kinds of things that may change your experience. Other than that, I wouldn't say that any one of these is terrible. You know, I think just that there's, there's you know, things to consider with each of them. This one being the best one in my experience to you. So now neither of them are really terrible, but um, just not my favorite. This one is for now. I like you. <laughs> Did I mention it goes from 30 inches to 72 inches on the arms, on the, the size of the, um, you know, hank that you can make. So that's pretty cool. I like it a lot. So you can spin it like this, or you can just pull the yarn like that. I don't really want to, I don't really have any skeins that I want to open right now, to be honest with you. I've caked everything up already. All right. So I am going to add to this video a demo of me actually um, using this yarn holder um, to cake 
to wind up a, a cake of yarn with my yarn winder. Should I talk about that while I'm at it? Because that's why most of y'all are looking for these anyway. Okay. I have two. This is probably the same one as everyone else's first yarn winder. So this one is Knit Picks and simple uh, clamp mechanism. You put this on the edge of a table and um, clamp that on. The yarn winds through here and set it through this notch and then you start turning and it winds a cake of yarn. This one does not do well past 50 grams in my personal experience. Um, I definitely wanted to upgrade very quickly because I deal pretty much always with 100 gram and it's too much for this on a regular basis. Every once in a while, sure, but not usually. So I got this bad boy. This is the Jumbo Ball Winder from the Oregon Woodworker at yarnswifts.com. I will look up a price for you and put it there. Let me put a note so I don't forget. Um, Oregon Woodworker Jumbo. Jumbo Ball Winder. How much? All right, y'all. So that is it for now. That is uh, my take on these yarn swifts. Your mileage may vary. I would love to hear about your experiences. Please do not forget to hit like if you liked it. <laughs> if you disliked it, talk to me, please. <laughs> Trying to build the channel, getting all of those likes. Um, it definitely helps. Leave a comment. Just say hi. That's cool. <laughs> just let me know you were here. If you have any questions, by all means, go ahead and leave a comment and ask your question. And as you see, I will make a video just for you. And we will talk about equipment or techniques or answer whatever questions that you have about fiber, about yarn, yarn dyeing, knit and crochet.